Okay, so with that done, we finally come to the important part of today's lecture. One of the two important part, which is wage determination. Okay, so before doing a more economics-based analysis, let's talk about how wages are determined. And so they're basically, well, let's, let's start with bargain. So there's always a bit of bargaining going on when you're about to accept a new job and talking about how much your salary will be. And at almost every type of job when you're bargaining, um, who has the bargaining power? depends on two factors. One is replaceability and the second is employability. So the replaceability is something that the people who are hiring you, let's say the firms uh, are more concerned with and employability is something the, the worker is more concerned with. So let me explain very quickly what they are. Replaceability is how easy it will be to replace this worker. So whether you're a person who's about to start a new job or you're all an existing worker of a firm and you're, let's say, renegotiating your contract, what the firm is concerned with is how easy it will be to replace you. The firm doesn't really care about how hard you're working. You may be working very, very hard, but if you can be easily replaced, you will not be paid a high salary. So think of all the people who do physically intensive work, like people working in mines and even, even in People we see every day, rickshaw pullers, they work really hard, but they don't earn a lot of money. Why not? Because they're very easily replaceable. When we're negotiating the fare with a rickshaw puller, and I want to pay, let's say, 30 taka, but he wants 40 taka, I'm not that eager to pay how much he wants because he is replaceable. I can just move to the next rickshaw puller and the next rickshaw puller until I find someone who, who agrees with how much I want to pay or at, at least come to a better compromise. So if you are replaceable, the people who are hiring you will not pay you a very high salary. But if you are not replaceable, if you have a skill that only a few people can do, and you're not replaceable, even if you are not going to work very hard, even if your employment, let's say, says you only have to work for a few hours every week, even then you will be paid a very high wage because the firm does not want to lose you. They will pay you anything as much as they can to, you know, to, to have you in their books. So, High replaceability gives the power to the firms. Low replaceability gives the power to the workers when you're negotiating or bargaining. This is what the firms will look at. As a worker, you're not really worried about this. As a worker, what you're worried about is your employability. What you're worried is that if you do not get this job in question, how easy will it be for you to find a similar job. If you don't have a lot of skills and a lot of experience and there's only a few things that you can do, you're not very employable. As a result, it is very risky for you to turn down one job offer because there may not be many other jobs that you can do. So that doesn't give you a lot of bargaining power. However, if you are a highly trained, highly educated person, you, have, you can perform a range of different tasks and there's a lot of different jobs that you can hold. 
in that case, your employability goes up and that gives you a lot of bargaining power because if the negotiation with this one firm does not work out, you can just go and you can just say no to this firm and go and work in another firm. That's, that's not very difficult for you. So when you're bargaining, these are the two things that matter. The firms, when they're assessing the worker, are trying to assess how replaceable that person is. And when workers are trying to decide whether or not to accept a job, they're trying to figure out how employable they are and whether they can find something better elsewhere. And these two together basically determines what the wage will be. Now, wages are determined in a lot of different ways. Uh, you may be negotiating on your own for your own wage. You may be negotiating as a group, trade unions, for example. You may be negotiating at a national level. There are a lot of different ways in which these things are